we're going to do the second salad that uh, we're going to, you'll get to eat today. Um, and I'm so happy that I chose the red to contrast. pair with or contrast with cashews. Let me just move all this over. Is it true that you have the James Beard Award as a pastry chef and the chef? I do. And are you the only one? I am the only How one. How cool is that? And that, by the way, was not scripted. In fact, Cheryl, Cheryl took me on a treacherous uh, hike yesterday uh, that during Runyon Canyon, oh, during Runyon Mountain is what it was, but anyway, she was telling me how amazing that is, that not only are you the only chef that's got pastry chef and outstanding chef, but that around the world, this is considered a man's world, and that you're a woman with that distinction is really wonderful. That's really awesome. You know, Tiffany, I'm gonna need my goat cheeks. Okay, so let's make a simple vinaigrette, because uh, I had one ready for you, and I'm just gonna show you how simple it is to make a vinaigrette and why you cannot buy a vinaigrette from the supermarket in a glass jar or bottle because they don't taste good. You know, uh, what, like four cookbooks of mine ago, because I just finished one, so then four ago, I did a cookbook called Twist of the Wrist, and I was trying to find fast, easy ways to get food on the table that still were nutritious and tasted delicious, but had a lot of integrity, you know, no weird ingredients. And I went through so many things, and there's are, because think about it, capers come from a jar, and anchovies come from a jar, right? Those are great. Olives, you know, there's so many great things that actually, you know, help to, uh, give, you know, impart flavor to a, a meal, and they're not bad. Um, but the one thing I couldn't get behind was a uh, store-bought salad dressing. That was like, uh, I, I tried, but there was not one on the market that was any, that is anywhere near what you can make at home. And the thing is, is that it's so simple to make. This one has shallots. It's gonna have a little balsamic vinegar. Salt and extra virgin olive oil. I mean, how hard is that, right? <laughs> and shallots are fresh. I get to control what olive oil is used, right? Do you have a big garden at your house in Italy? You know what? I have a wild garden, and uh, and I have lots and lots of herbs and. I just, because I'm not there, you know, I'm only there in the summer. I love, uh, sorry, I love all my herbs because um, everything I cook, just I go out and I get my scissors and I feel like I am at one with my Italian terroir, you know? It's, it's really great. And I think that anybody, sorry, anybody that doesn't have the time to grow a garden can at least have herbs. So I'm marinating my beets in the dressing I just made and a little salt because, as you know, we're layering and seasoning every single ingredient. Next is my radicchio. And by the way, the beets were uh, just roasted and peeled, red beets. And I'm unpeeling my radicchio. And I love, love, love radicchio. Um, that at one time, maybe in the days when Judy and I met, those so-called 15 years ago or more, 1942, <laughs> uh, radicchio was considered exotic. Now everybody knows it's a member of the chicory family. It's used all the time uh, in, in, in so much in Italian uh, cooking. Uh, I love its flavor. I love it raw. I love it cooked. And I love to wrap things in it. I'm just tearing it up into pieces that are going to complement my beets. Tearing it rather than cutting it slows the oxidation, doesn't yes. it? Yes. And beets. you really notice that really like it is something pale or like an iceberg. All right, I've got this. And now, something that I was trying to figure out the 
do, let me start back. One of my favorite combinations is goat's cheese and beets. I think it's a great combination and probably every single restaurant you go to has beets and goat cheese. Why? Because it works. What do I personally hate about beets and goat's cheese together? I can't stand the way the um, beets stain the goat cheese. And I don't want to offend anybody here, or actually I don't want to offend any of the women here, but every time I see goat's fresh goat cheese with beets tossed together, it reminds me of a lady's, I'll say it with my eyes closed, a lady's lipstick that bleeds into the cracks of her lips. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm, yeah. Is that a terrible thing to say? Mm -hmm. no. Nope. So, how am I... I Oh, yeah. 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 I'm not even thinking that way on the show. How do I not let that happen? And I thought, and I thought, and I thought. And one day, a couple weeks ago, what? Injections. Yeah. We're not, I don't care about the lips. I'm talking about, more importantly, the goat's cheese and the beef problem. So, one day, I was flipping through one of those crazy catalogs you get, you know, that have the worst looking food and, and stylized terribly. And there were these giant cheese balls rolled in nuts. And I thought, ha ha, I'm going to take those. I'm going to take that cheese and I'm going to roll the nuts so I get pistachios in my salad. But I'm also going to stop that old lady lipstick bleeding into the lips. And that's what they do. It insulates it. I don't think any of us are ever going to forget this too. You won't? I don't think so. All right. So, good. So, let's build second salad and then Tiffany is at the has that almost ready and we're going to uh, start to put them on the table so you can taste that they not only look delicious but taste delicious and Chad is just going to run you really quickly through the um, the swordfish which is going to be your dish followed the salads okay of course I am seasoning right because you have to season everything I'm going to drizzle my over and then you, you saw how careful I was with my delicate salad, right? Now I'm going to get all my depression out and I am going to work that dressing into every cre crevice of my radicchio because a radicchio is so sturdy that it re the dressing really needs to be worked in and also salad needs to be beat up a little just to break it down. You do the same thing. Like, no, massage I'm like doing it like, oh, a, you know, like, like I'm like doing real. it. I'm like I'm not saying be careful. I'm getting it in there. And I actually like to dress radicchio about 20 minutes ahead of time just because as the acid uh, re uh, reacts with the radicchio it starts to, we say, cook it a little bit. It breaks it down, and it also the color changes a little. It's really beautiful. So I'm going to, again, build my salad with my beets. I have it marinated. I noticed in your recipes you use malden salt. Do you use that all the time? Well, I use malden, and I'll tell you why. Well, first of all, kosher salt just like seasoning a dressing. Malden pretty much to finish. And the reason for that is because I like the granulation of malden. I like a flake salt better, uh, better than a um, than a, a coarser sea salt because sometimes the toothiness of the salt gets in the way. And a few more pistachios because they are so delicious, right? But look, I don't know if you can see what Judy was talking about, and I don't know if she added the red thing because she saw the beets or if she really believes it. No, but I mean, mean look at that. I'm continuing to build. So, and um, yeah, with my beets and my beautiful pistachio balls. That's a brilliant idea. Do you like that? Yeah. I think it's a great idea too because, again, you get the nuts. I'm not doing something stupid, right? And, uh, and it makes sense except for they're rolling. with some nuts and a beautiful salad, I think. Great. Very nice. All right, and then 
real quickly, just because I think you might be interested to see the uh, the. Sort